This is chapter 15, Nationalism and Revolution Around the World, discussion number three, Nationalism in China. Nationalism in China really struggled through the early 1900s. While Chinese themselves have a great pride in who they are and their culture, they weren't able to actually establish themselves independent economically and politically because the European powers were carving them up into spheres of influence and exclusive trading areas. Now, the leadership for the nationalist movement in China was the Guomindang Party, the Nationalist Party, and they were led by Sun Yat-sen. Now, Sun Yat-sen, uh, through the early 1900s, was encouraging the Chinese to be the Chinese, not to try to be Europeans, to try to establish themselves as independent. However, when Sun Yat-sen resigned from the leadership of the Guomindang, the idea of nationalism and economic and political independence in China fell by the wayside as the local warlords started trying to carve out their own little pieces of China, and they were essentially selling out um, contracts of their areas of China to which foreign power would be able to trade with them in response for money, in response for economic help, in response for um, for military equipment in order to continue their dominance of that area as wo local warlords. Now, so China's got a whole bunch of local people fighting amongst themselves trying to establish their own specific flavor of of their leadership. So during World War I, Japan, seeing that China's not really going to be able to stand for itself, uh, delivered their 21 demands, essentially saying, China, do this or else. And China says, no, but we really can't do anything about it. Japan comes in and pretty much starts to dominate China, and they make China their protectorate. Remember, protectorate means is that they're kind of get to be their own country, but, Ch but Japan's going to be telling China what to do and how to do it correctly. And after World War I, Japan was given complete titular control of the areas in China that were German, because remember the Germans lost World War I. Now, the Guomindang is essentially being led uh, by two different leaders. Uh, one was Jiang Jieshi. And when I came up in high school, he, his name was pronounced Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, but your book says Jiang Jieshi, and that's the more modern American uh, translation of it. Uh, took the leadership of the Guomindang, and he teamed up with Mao Zedong. Now, Mao Zedong was a communist, and he had l received training from the Soviet Union, how to establish a Chinese of communism. And so we have two different ideas what China should become. Uh, Zhang Jieshi's ideas of more of a state capitalism and Mao Zedong, which was communist. And they start essentially trying to kill each other. One of the big events during the Chinese Civil War is the Long March. The communists were losing the civil uh, Zhang Jieshi enjoyed uh, support from the business people and the uh, the people of of China that were uh, more capitalist, and uh, on top of that, he was also getting support from Western nations uh, against the communists. However, Mao was able to engender himself to be popular amongst the Chinese, especially during the Long March. Uh, you see a map on. Uh, slide 17, of the, how the Chinese retreated away from the coast of China, which is where most of the population is, uh, going through most of inland China as they headed toward a location where they kind of uh, rested and regained their strength. And they got a lot of popularity mainly because uh, Mao required all of his followers to pay for their food, not steal it, treat everyone with respect, and a lot of people saw, took that and saw that and said, this is the type of leader that we wanted for China. And so that's what got the communists very popular in China, was Mao's treatment of the of the land and the people as uh, during the Long March. Um, however, the Japanese then invaded into China in the 19th. It was at that point that Mao and Zhang Jesse uh, worked together to repel the Japanese all the way through World War II. And then after the Japanese were defeated, they went right back to trying to kill each other uh, until Zhang Jieshi was pulled, pushed out of China 
and he, he retreated onto the island of Taiwan. This concludes discussion number three, nationalism in China.